This is my Daystate Pulsar 177 caliber. And on a good breezy day, I've put out some tins, about 100 yards that way. Here we go. And I hit it, first take. It's incredible. It's a superb gun. This is Daystate's flagship air rifle, the Pulsar. Daystate have a reputation of making spot-on electronic air rifles, and this is no different. However, it is completely untraditional. It's all new, so let's take a closer look. It is a fully electronic controlled air gun, from the trigger through to the firing cycle. While the cocking of the rifle is still human controlled, the heart is computer controlled and even the air pressure is measured for each shot. The air release system is called MCT, which is short for Mapped Compensate Technology. And in layman's terms, it means at all times the gun knows what air pressure is in the cylinder. And thus, when the trigger is pulled, the computer releases the right amount of air from the cylinder to keep a consistent, accurate shot, time and time again. I'm going to try and demonstrate that MCT system to you using a fire extinguisher. Now, firstly, imagine your standard PCP air rifle. When you pull the trigger, there is a spring inside that system which throws the hammer forward. That hammer strikes the back of your air cylinder. Now, that hammer is going to strike the back of that air cylinder exactly the same every single time. Doesn't matter how high or low the charge is on your air cylinder, it's going to strike it the same every time. So if it's on high pressure, your air cylinder with the hammer system, you get a nice long burst. If it's on low pressure, that hammer is going to still strike the back of that release valve, but you're just going to get a little bit out which is where you get a power curve in a normal PCP air rifle. With the MCT system though, every time you pull that trigger, the electronics measure that air cylinder's pressure. So literally, no matter whether you're at high pressure or low pressure, you simply get the same squirt of air every single time, which means you get an incredibly consistent shot pattern. And I'm rather enjoying myself. Oh. It's empty. So, from a 210 bar fill of the 300cc air cylinder, right down to around 106 bar in 177, the 210 shots I'm getting before my low pressure warning would appear are within a few feet per second of each other right across the board. And this graph demonstrates the consistency and flat shot string right across the charge. Those electronics are run by six AA batteries which sit inside the stock. Getting at them is easy, just remove the stock by undoing one bolt and separate the stock from the action of the gun. While you're doing this, you can see the encasement that holds the electronic heart of the pulsar. You can also adjust the onboard laser by doing this, but I will come back to that later. And don't worry about the longevity of those batteries when it comes to shooting. Daystate says you can get at least 14,000 shots from a set of standard batteries. The gun itself weighs around 3.5 kilos, but that can vary slightly because different stock options are available. Here I have the laminate and the synthetic. There's also a walnut option. However, all internals are the same, with the rifle itself being 30 inches in length and the barrel is 17 inches. Now you'll be able to tell from the video that things in the background have been changing. The grass has got longer and shorter again. That's because I've been filming this video 
for about three months now, so I've spent a good amount of time with the Pulsar. I'm not the most gentle of creatures in the world either. I have dropped it every now and again. It's fallen off the table, it's tipped over on the stand, and it continues to work faultlessly. In fact, the fit and finish on the rifle really is second to none. The dangerous end of the barrel is threaded for an optional silencer. Mine here is a hug it. They seem to be the moderator of choice for air gun shooters in the world. Talking of the barrel, it's a Walther Lothar match grade one, which floats above the air cylinder with ease, and the scope rail sweeps forward on top with dovetail mounts on board. At the back of the swept rail is a bubble level, which helps you level the gun as you shoot to prevent cant. No, cant. I'll put a link in the description box below to explain that. The Pulsar comes with a 10 shot magazine included and a single shot tray. The magazine is the now normal day state one, but this has the advances brought on from early rifles with it. To prevent anti-double load, the rifle has a release pin, which when the rifle is fired, pops up quicker than the eye can see. And this clips the release lever under the magazine, which enables it to cycle the next pellet when the cocking lever is next cycled. Other than that, it's drop the pellets in, rotate, and then slide the mag in, and you're ready to shoot. The cocking lever is changeable by the user from right to left. It takes just a few minutes, and the manual that comes with the rifle explains it. That manual is also downloadable onto your computer. The cocking lever is part of the system to change the electronic settings on the Pulsar. When the rifle is in safe, pull the cocking lever fully back and hold the trigger down, and the program mode comes onto the display. Repress the trigger, and you can then cycle through the three options you can change. Magazine shot count on or off, laser, on or off, or your choice of the two power levels. The fore end is a sturdy plastic composite, which has a Picatinny rail moulded into it for a bipod. And in that moulding also sits the laser. Now I know in some countries a laser may get you into a spot of bother, so you can turn it off. But for zeroing and checking your aim, it is quite useful. The laser can be adjusted via the ports under the stock or you can remove the stock itself. To show you just how easy this feature is to use, Dan from Braces of Bristol visited me and shot a group at 50 yards, just by looking at a live CCTV image 50 yards away and moving the rifle accordingly to hit the target while spotting the laser dot. I don't recommend you do this unless you are James Bond, but it does show the laser in action. Let's go ahead and talk about what a lot of you out there would call is the elephant in the room when it comes to the Pulsar. It is a bullpup. Yes, it is. It's very different. However, it does have a nice adjustable shoulder pad, which enables you to get completely comfortable with the rifle. And for those of you that like to walk and shoot, it is incredibly easy. And the whole reloading thing, after a couple of minutes, just becomes second nature. And you just keep shooting until your magazine's empty. Simple. The grip is a fixed AR style, which, if I'm honest, takes a bit of getting used to for the old paws. It is so different compared to a traditional rifle grip. But again, give it time, you will bond with it. The trigger is fully electronic and adjustable. I fettled my trigger and got it just right for me. It's a simple click of the finger and the shot is released downrange. As I've said before, that trigger is switched safe and live by the well-placed button just behind it. The trigger is almost a semi-trigger, not a full curve. Something more like a wing on an aircraft, very similar to other Daystate electronic air rifles.
Shooting the Pulsar really is incredibly easy. The cocking lever indexes the magazine like a hot knife through butter and the shot break is clean, crisp and instantaneous. Yes, yes, yes. Nice and pretty, but how accurate is it? Let me show you. I wanted to find the best pellet for the Pulsar, so I shot five groups at 30 yards or 27.4 meters. Each group was five shots, AA fields, day state sovereigns, hollow points, JSB exacts, and bislies. Shooting at a quarter inch dot, I started. I'm using the ATN X Site 2 HD to capture my footage. It's by far the easiest way for me to show you exactly what I can see and what I'm doing. And here are my results. Now, clearly, the best two groups are the air arms and the day states. Look away now, day state. Going to give it by a whisker to the air arms. And with that pellet of choice, I can now shoot 10 shots at 30 yards. This is what I got. Out of 10 then, I've got two slightly high, but that's eight through the same hole. Shooting at 50 yards is what I get screamed at for everything I video. So I went from 30 yards to 50 yards in moments. Quick zero with one shot, and then fired nine at a two inch target.
It seems I have six within half an inch and the other three just outside, making nine. Don't forget the one for zeroing, and that's with very little effort. The pulsar is clearly bang on. For those of you outside of the UK looking for a high-powered pulsar, it's available in 177, 22 and 25. And if you want to see it in action in the field, click on this video now and you can see a good friend of mine, Kit Perot, putting it through its paces at the dairy farm in Phoenix, Arizona. So after three months of my live shooting Daystate Pulsars, that one in particular, what have I found that's not to like? Well, honestly, nothing really. I love it. It's a staggeringly good air gun incredibly accurate but yes it does look different but think back 10-15 years ago when manufacturers were changing car designs everyone got all upset oh it doesn't look like my capri from the 1980s no it's called modernization it's called being different it's called moving on and that is what the pulsar to me is all about all pcp air rifles outshoot us nowadays simple full stop you need to move your crosshairs on the target by one millimeter through that glass and that millimeter downrange has been magnified to a couple of centimeters and if the wind gets hold of the pellet well it could go an inch or two to the left or the right you can't beat mother nature with an air rifle but what you can get is consistency and that is what the day state pulsar mct gives you it gives you the consistency to know that that shot is going exactly the same place every single time. Yes, you can't beat the wind and you can't beat yourself, but the rifle is always going to be spot on. And that is exactly what the Daystate Pulsar is.